the Style History, a video series from the Mark of a Gentleman blog that seeks to explain the odd and sometimes mind-boggling origins of today's most common gentlemanly fashions. My name's Blake, and today we start out with the modern shirt collar. So it's the mid-1700s, and every woman in Europe is complaining that every time their neckwear wears out on the top of their garments, they have to throw the entire garment away. As you can imagine, this becomes expensive even for a nobility class that is obsessed with gold silverware and fancy footwear. So the solution to this problem becomes a detachable ruffle that could be put over the top of a garment up around the neck that could be easily attached or changed out and thrown away when you were done. But like most things fashion, this soon became an unending competition among the wealthy class to see who could have the tallest, widest, uh, ridiculous, most ornate ruffle in the entire kingdom, and it got so ridiculous that during the mid-1800s it could possibly get up to a foot and a half tall, making it very hard to turn around, see anybody behind you, but very, very helpful if you just got spayed or neutered. Luckily, after a few decades of this unending struggle among the wealthy class, the ruffle eventually died out and gave way to something that looked very much like a modern collar, but was always kept popped up. Unfortunately for the good people of Europe, the competition didn't stop there, because now with the new straight, thick collars, the high class could have a competition of who could make it the sharpest, and additionally, who could go taller, taller, and taller. Now, even later into the 1800s, these collars actually became a physical danger, because they were made so sharp that they would actually cut the bottom of the ears and the bottom around the jawline of the people that were wearing them. Of course, there would be one group of people that this really doesn't affect, and that would be the peasants, who upon hearing of all their masters falling over dead from all the paper cuts underneath their ears and jawline said, Oh, you've gone and spoiled our revolt! Fortunately, after years and years of the bloodthirsty reign of terror by shirt collars over European people, a company called Lacoste came out with a tennis shirt with a collar that was much less razor sharp, softer, and meant to be worn up as well, but only to prevent sunburn while playing tennis. So Lacoste releases this savior of men's necks and earlobes in 1929, and it explodes into super fashionedom. Fashionedom? People basically begin to wear these shirts absolutely everywhere, and as they move indoors, the collars still kind of provide a little less mobility and uh, kind of make you look like a tool. So, some wise person somewhere in the middle 1900s decides to put that collar down. That particular person's ingenuity will stay with us through some of the most trying times of American history. But, unfortunately, Hollister will be founded somewhere in the late 1900s and completely reverse everything the gentleman worked so hard for. And thus is the history of the shirt collar. What began as a segregational tool evolved later on into a razor-sharp robbery deterrent and then eventually into something classic and the staple of every gentleman. Therefore, I encourage you gentlemen that today, take a moment as you put on your shirt to feel your collar and thank the good Lord above that it's not so razor sharp that it can shave your sideburns for you. Well, that is it for today's style history. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. Please visit the Mark Magellan blog anytime you like for stylish advice in video form or otherwise. Cheers, gentlemen. That's life. That's life. That's what all the people say. You're riding high in April.